this is a 2019 Ford Ranger and this is the Lariat trim level. Today we are with our friends at Chuck's Faith Ford in beautiful New Ulm, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, Guys in a Ride. Ride. And today we're taking a look at this 2019 Ford Ranger and this is the Lariat trim level. But say, if you want to keep up to date with the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to keep up with all the latest vehicle technologies, and you love cool collector car stories, take a second to hit that subscribe button below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nathan? Let's, Let's go, go for a ride. I like the interior of this one. We've been in some other uh, mid-sized pickups. I think this was one of my favorite. This the, the fit and finish is really good. Is everything's tight, mm -hmm. uh, no gaps. Um, I like I like the design. I know, I know you don't. There's some um, trim pieces. Trim pieces that Rob doesn't really like, but I like. And it might just be the color. It's just that could it's be. like a barely sparkly gray. Yeah. I like the overall. I like the dashboard, the layout. It's low, and you've got a good mm, commanding view. Seen that view. before? Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yep, you do. Um, I, I like the little reverse power. We call it reverse like power, power dome. dome. You got little two like hood scoop power domes up there and then you've got the, the indent in the middle. That's cool. I'll show that on the outside review. Yeah. Good commanding view. Yeah. You, got, you do. I feel like I'm in a full size truck. It's setting up there. Pretty you high. are. And that was my first impression when I stepped in going, oh wow, you really are up quite high. And that is maybe a, a, a good thing. It may be a bad thing. It is quite a high step up into this into the truck. So it does give you that commanding view. But for shorter people or men or women that don't like the, that high step up, maybe you know it's a deterrent. But what about everything else you've got going on in here? What do we got? Oh man! So this is the Lariat Edition, and so it's the top of the line. It, it doesn't have every single package because optional package because even with the Larry there's optional packages yep. like the heavy duty tow haul and the uh, trail mode so th those are options that this doesn't have but you could get it on here if you wanted okay you could order it and, and certainly have it on there um, it's, it's I know yeah the ride the, um, the the overall road noise is very subdued it's very quiet I like the ride quality in here I, mean, I don't know if it's a combination, you know, probably well, it's a combination of everything with the seats and, and the suspension, but for for a pickup mm -hmm. and a shorter wheelbase, because this is a smaller one, it actually has a very pleasant ride. One thing I notice on the seats, and you probably do too, uh, they're short seats. You don't get a lot of, uh, you see how it doesn't go out further under your thigh? because it's, it's a shorter seat so I know what they did they, I mean it's not just here in this vehicle it's in many they they tr the, the bottom part of the seat doesn't extend out as far as some vehicles do. right uh, and they do that as a space saving I mean it gives you support yes but you can just you just see the, and feel that it's a little bit shorter seat but it allows more interior space because you don't have a, such a large seat taking up yeah. the interior but it's still comfortable yeah so see, it's that just being a little said, short it's, on it's the thigh still, support it's still yeah but it's still very comfortable. I mean, I, I really hadn't even noticed that until you pointed it out. Yeah. So if I hadn't noticed it, then at least for me, you know, what wasn't a huge deal. Right. The seats are comfortable, though. They do have just enough padding. And for me, just the right mm -hmm. amount of support. Headrest is in a perfect position. I always try to have n no expectations because I don't want to say, oh, this didn't meet this. Didn't. But, I mean, you, you do have basic expectations. But not having had a ranger in the u.s for several years and then that other body style was so old uh 
they've really done a good job. Even though this vehicle has been out in Europe and other places for a few years, I think they uh, probably worked the kinks out before they brought it to the U.S. And it seems from this side like a, a pretty cool truck. Yeah, overall, I, I really, really like it. I think it's one of the nicer mid-sized uh, pickups out there. All right, so I am going to uh, pull over here and let Rob drive. It's you know for for a, for a, a, a mid-sized pickup, this feels good back here. Yeah, the steering wheel does feel different. It doesn't feel. I don't know what it is about. Doesn't it. feel quite like leather. No, but I, you know it doesn't bother me. Um, I'm hoping it is leather, but it doesn't feel up to the same materials that are elsewhere on the vehicle. Yeah. I like it's padded. I yeah. like the the grip bumps here, mm -hmm. and you know it's it's nicely done. Got a lot of buttons on it. I know you like that. Oh yeah. Um, but it, it's comfortable, and it's you know it's manually adjustable. It's um, yep, telescoping and up and down. So that's cool. I, I like the gauges. The only one thing I don't care for is they put the digital speed over speedometer over to the left and not right in the center where the re the regular analog speed speedometer is yeah eh, whatever it's fine it's there that's cool because I use that on my car I, I watch the digital I never even pay attention to the analog anymore so much doesn't easier. pay attention to any speedometer <laughs> digital or otherwise but uh, handling wise it handles very well it is a small truck I mean small we say small uh, meaning it's their smaller truck no pickup trucks are really small US made pickup trucks are small it's got plenty of room in it plenty of capacity but it's uh, very maneuverable we've been driving here in town and it's extremely maneuverable and I'm gonna get Nathan sick now because <laughs> no, it just thank you. weaves that's, back and forth very easy just what I need <laughs> great line of sight I like the overall fit and finish of materials inside too. A lot of soft touch materials. One thing that I'm having an issue with, and I didn't know if you did, Nathan, it seemed like the door, the doors are a little shorter to make sure they get four doors on this. My elbow, as I'm laying it on the the door armrest, is hitting the hard part of the back of the door. Um, no, I actually did not notice that. I noticed that on the passenger side as well, and that was just a little discerning. So. All right, so that was the ride. Now we're going to take right. you for a review of the outside, and then later Nathan will take your review and show you all the gadgets and gizmos on the inside. All right, so for 2019, the Ford Ranger is available in three different uh, trim levels. You've got the XL, the XLT, and the Lariat. XL starts at 24,300, XLT 28,120, and the Lariat 32,390. Then, of course, you can add Super Cab or Crew Cab, uh, which will then obviously up the price, and also uh, different options available on each one of those trim levels. This particular version is the Lariat, as we said. It is uh, powered by a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine with producing 270 horsepower. And more importantly for a truck, you got 310 foot pound of torque. And uh, you know, I could really feel that when we were driving it uh, earlier. It is powered by an electronic 10 speed transmission with tow haul mode select shift. And it is an electronic shift on the fly uh, with a four x four only. Now up front, the, it is auto automatic on and off headlights. This particular version, the Lariat, does have daytime running lights that are LED. Uh, the headlights are LED and the fog lights, as you see below, they are also LED. There are several different grill trims available. Uh, standard on the Lariat is the chrome bar with chrome surround. However, you can get a carbon black mesh with silver surround, a black mesh grill with black surround, uh, a black mesh grill and magnetic surround. I guess the magnetic surround is like a grayish color that they offer. Also up front, you'll see there are two tow hooks. There is uh, an exposed steel bash plate, and then you have a steel frame mounted bumper on the front end. Now on the front, it does have independent suspension. You see the body colored wheel lip moldings. The side mirrors are power folded. Uh, dual power glass with heat and integrated turn signal and security approach lights. Uh, there are typically, when you, when, with the options checked, 
You can get running boards that are five inch rectangular, black or chrome. This vehicle does not have those. Um, it, like I said earlier, it does have quite a high step in, so those running boards or running bars, one, uh, whatever you wanted to add to it, would definitely aid in the step in of the vehicle. You do have uh, front rotors are 12.2 inch and the rear rotors are 12.1 inch, so four wheel disc brakes, and it does have ABS. You do have the 18 inch machine aluminum wheel with stealth gray pockets. Uh, riding on uh, either 265-60R18 black sidewalls, which you see here, or 265-60R18 uh, outlined white lettered uh, all-terrain tires, and that's on the 4x4. You would have the 265-60R18 black sidewalls on the 4x2. This is, as we said, a 4x4. Now, the back end, you do have the power locking tailgate, and you do have a rear window, manual sliding glass with privacy and defroster. Let me pop, well, let me show you this real quick. You've got the tailgate with a chrome handle and it's power locking. Then you have the backup camera right under the Ford emblem. And now this vehicle is not um, equipped with the trailering package, but of course that's an option that you can add as well. So I'm gonna drop tailgate down. It is not one of the soft drop tailgates or cushion tailgates, whatever they call them now. Uh, it's like a standard tailgate, but it's, it's pretty light. Uh, so it must be aluminum. It's very light. Uh, the cargo width on here between the wheel housings is 44.8 inches. Cargo width on the top rear 61.4 inches. Cargo volume 51.8 cubic feet. Height of the box is 20.8. Width uh, at the floor, 61.4, and the cargo length is 72 inches. The tailgate width is 55.4 inches. But this vehicle does come with terrain management system with selectable drive modes, and it has pre-collision pre assist and automatic emergency braking, forward and reverse sensing. We saw the rear view camera, advanced track with roll stability, and then of course if you were to get in an accident it does have SOS post crash alert system. Overall height of the vehicle is 71.1 inches. Overall length is 210.8 inches. Ground clearance 8.9 inches. And it rides on a wheelbase of 126.8 inches. Fuel economy you're looking at uh, 20 city, 24 highway, combined 22 and when equipped properly you're going to get a maximum towing capacity of 3500 pounds which is not bad for a little 2.3 liter four cylinder echo boost engine 270 horsepower 310 foot pound of torque on the styling of the vehicle you know i've not seen them up close I've not seen many on the road. However, our local dealer is selling through them really quickly and it's taken us a while to actually get a chance to, to drive one because every time they get one in, they sell it. But there's a lot of styling features that I like. I like the wheel lip molding here. I really think it's cool how they integrated the front um, reflector into that as well. And then I like the exaggerated wheel opening arch line on both the front and the rear as well. And then I like this little kink kick up here at the rear window and how it softly goes around and I like the cut line along the bottom as you see there that little cut line I think it's a pretty good styling feature overall it's a good looking truck it definitely has a, uh, the Ford family resemblance you see the kind of the dual power dome hood I like that as well overall nicely done very impressed uh, other reviews I've seen and red they talk about its dated styling i think it fits right in with the current ford look and it, it's definitely a part of the ford family and it, and it shows i don't see any issues uh in its styling inside or out i actually think it's a good looking truck okay so i'm just going to stand here a while and see how long it takes nathan to want to come talk to you guys about the inside because there's a lot of cool gizmos and gadgets and stuff and i think he went off to get a pop Eddie? or something Eddie? oh there he went <laughs> um I'm think, here. I think he, well, hey, we want to get subscribers, Nathan. We just lost 50. Oh. <laughs> Did so, you point the camera at yourself? No. Uh, oh. So, okay, Nathan, it's your turn. I want you to take them and show them, uh, give them a, give them, tell, I don't know. Tell us what you're going to do. Well, today 
I'm going to get in the car and drive away and leave Rob here. <laughs> and then I'll show you the inside. No, we're going to step on inside and we're going to take a tour of the inside of this beautiful 2019 Ford Ranger. All right. Lariat edition. Well, take it away. I know uh, it's your turn. I can't. I'll take it away. All Let's right. Go. See you later. Bye. And stepping into the front of the 2019 Ford Ranger. Again, this is the Lariat trim level. On the driver's door here, we do have auto up and down for the driver and standard window controls for the rest. Here's your window lockout. Up here is this typical on Fords. This is your unlock and lock button, as well as your door uh, open handle. And then down here, you've got some good storage down here. You've got a bottle holder, a little extra spare space, and then some more space right here. The door does contain two of the Bang & Olsen sound speakers. This is a 10-speaker sound system. And it is Bang & Olsen, and it sounds really, really good. Um, I like the door. There's a lot of black on there, but there's a little bit of white stitching right in here to set it off, along with the sort of a satin chrome door handle. Okay, so on the uh, driver's seat and the passenger seat is exactly the same way. It's uh, it's eight-way power, including lumbar. Hey, and then of course this is your recline. It's a manual recline, and it's the same on both sides. Hey, okay, moving over here, you've got your hood release, and then up here you have fuses. So this would all pull down. I'm not going to pull it down, but this whole piece right here would pull down. Moving up here to our standard Ford lighting control, you've got fog lamps. You, this does have auto lamps on it. And of course you have off parking, regular lights or auto. And then of course your dashboard lights, bright or dim. Okay, back here you have a cargo light that you can turn on or off. And then up here is your mirror control. This would be your left mirror, that would be your right mirror. And then this is your power folding button. This is, a, of course, a push start. Now you'll notice that the technology is, is not new. It's certainly the layout is not. You do have um, this typical setup, what we've seen in Fords for a long time, where you have the speedometer here. And then you have about a 4.2 inch LCD screen here and one here. However, um, I, I happen to like this layout. Ford's added uh, a few uh, tricks to each side um, that are new that, that I have not seen. And I like it. One of them was the seat belt indicator. So it tells you who's in what seat and if the seat belt's fastened. So I like that. Um, but the, the controls are familiar. So as in older Fords, you've got this cursor set up here on the left and the cursor set up on the right. And I did this review on my on my Explorer, which is 2011, that the buttons have been redesigned and they're much nicer. They're much more exact when you, when you push on them. And I like that, I like that improvement. So down here, you've got on and off for cruise control, resume and cancel up here. If this has adaptive cruise control, so this will increase the gap, this will decrease the gap. And of course, set your cruise control or then increase or decrease your cruise control speed. Moving over here, down below, you have, um, you have phone on and phone off, and you've got uh, mute, and you've got voice command. This does have voice command navigation as well as some other voice commands uh, that you can use with your phone. Volume up and down. All right, moving on up here, get to take a look at the view of the dashboard. Um, you know, we were talking in the drive, we weren't sure if this, uh, this, is, this had a different feel to it. It is indeed leather. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's just had a different feel to it. And so up here, I, I, I like this. This is a very flat dashboard. I, I like the pocket that Ford puts up in here in a lot of their vehicles, I, I really like that. That's part of your Bang & Olufsen uh, sound system up there. And if you notice in the windshield, I don't know if you can see or not, it actually says Ranger. All right, and then uh, there is another, of course, uh, Bang & Olufsen speaker. And then let's talk for a second about the uh, your infotainment system. So th this is these are very nice. Um, they're very responsive. Um, I, I like how they're laid out. You've got your basic um, controls under here. 
what I like is this home screen. So you've got, you can have GPS running. You could have your media source, whatever it is, AM, FM, XM, satellite, um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, whatever's playing on your media system will show up here. And your phone would show up here, and then it shows you have heated seats, if you would like to have those turned on. And then you have the basic controls over here. I like that layout. It gives you so much information right away. I also like it that it shows you what temperature the driver's side is and what temperature the passenger side is. All right, moving on down here. You do have some physical controls for the radio. You've got your power on off. You've got your volume, which is just a... I like how they put these numbers right in the screen for you. And then you've got tuning. So if I start tuning, you can see the radio station is changing. Okay. And then down here you have a uh, rewind or go back one, go forward one or rewind one or fast forward one, play and pause. So you have those physical buttons for your radio. Down here on the climate control system, you've got uh, it's a dual zone. So this is where the passenger increases their temperature and it will display up here on the screen. Okay, and the same thing for the passengers is on this side, and it will also display on the screen. All right, fan speed is right here. Here are your defrosters. You've got, uh, you can turn it to auto climate control, regular AC, max AC, or recirculatory. Here is your power on or off button for your climate control system. And then you have three stage heated seats on both sides. Going down a little bit further below, Let's see if I can get this shot here. There we go. You got two 12 volt outlets. All right, so you got one on this side, and you'll see a little uh, triangle at the bottom. That's where you grab it and lift it up. And then the same thing on this side, you put your finger where the triangle is and lift up. I really like these covers. Now, down here, you do have two USB ports. And they are regular USB, not USB-C, so uh, it'll accept probably what, what you currently have for a USB cable. This will hook you into uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well as charge your phone. Moving on down here, we have the Auto Start Stop feature, which we can turn on or off. You have a tow haul mode. You can turn your parking sensors off or on and traction control. Now, if you had the off-road package here where you had the, the, the trailer stuff or the trail modes, those buttons would also be down here. And then you could do like uh, cruise control for off-road, uh, hill descent, uh, hill ascend, and that kind of stuff. So that would be down this area. This truck does not have that. For the four-wheel drive system, you can either have it in too high, four high, or four low. And again, it's just a rotary switch. Okay. The shifter is actually a physical handle. It's not a spin dial like it is on the Explorer. Um, so it works just like you'd expect it to. And you have a drive mode, and then you put it down, and you have a sport mode. And that will reflect on your dashboard as you go between the two different modes. Okay. You do have, um, if you go in, if you want to shift manually, you just use these plus and minus buttons, um, and then it will shift manually for you. Moving back here, you have got. Uh, two cup holders, and then a manual emergency brake. And then back here, we've got the center armrest console. You do have a little extra cubby storage right here. And then down in here, you have a pretty good sized storage area. No additional outlets in there. Okay, moving across here, we've got the glove compartment which is good size. You've got a little separate, I don't know if you can see here, but there's actually a little ridge right here. And this is for your owner's manual, so it keeps it separate from the rest of the glove box. Really like that. Okay, so let's just step back for a minute and take a look at the trim. I know this is the part Rob couldn't decide if he if he liked or didn't like. I like that. Um, and in the sun, it's actually quite got quite a bit of metallic flake in there. Um, I imagine that that could come in a different color, um, but not positive. Um, but I like that. I like it. It's subtle. I think it's nice with the chrome uh, accents around the air vents here. 
and then the little touches of chrome around everything else so it's just not overstated all right moving up here uh but the only thing we really have up here we have an automatic dimming rear view mirror and then of course you have your reading lamps which are led okay and then you can turn them of course on or turn them so they don't come on when you open the doors and then back here you have your sunglass holder your home link controls are right up here on the driver's side and you have a backlit mirror and it is a telescoping um, visor and it has these additional little clips for your you know insurance papers or whatever you want little cards you want to put up there all right stepping into the uh, passenger side here you can see you got your standard window control and your door locks same amount of storage and you can even see that the passenger seat is eight-way power then a manual recline just like the driver's side into the second row of the 2019 uh, ford ranger Lariat edition um, there is one feature that is unique uh, you got your standard power windows here switch you've got a cup holder a bottle holder you got some storage but and your banging olsen sound speaker you have your own unlock and lock buttons you do have dual seat pockets on both sides and I like that down here you've got two additional USB charging ports as well as a 110 volt 150 watt household outlet right there um, you have a tiny storage right here okay and then as far as the back seat those are a few tricks right here first of all of course you have your armrest and cup holders okay but if you pull right down here you can lift the whole rear seat up this is not this is a bench seat so it's not a 60 40 split or anything you have some nice storage down here um i'm gonna say okay comes to hmm, a little hard to show you there probably about right here see my finger right there on my hand okay so almost a, a hands uh, length deep and then over here you've got some additional storage as well as some of your tools um, for your uh, jack okay and then if I close this I just simply pull this lever again the seat goes down now I can also put this down so if I push this button here lower the headrest pull this button you can see you've got your jack back here you've got another part of the Bang & Olsen sound system back here okay and some other electronics this is your uh, sliding rear window this is a manually sliding rear window okay so the latch is right there for it and then you just put this right back up here and then push that up so in the second row of the ranger um first of all i've got um, a little over an inch maybe inch and a half two inches of headspace again the roof is curved is indented right here so it gives you a little extra headroom and then for my legs okay it's a close this fit but i can stick a finger between my legs here um i have readjusted the seat because i sat in here and i readjusted the seat to where i was comfortable in the front okay so as i go like this i'm i am brushing part of the the seat back here um but for a uh, uh mid-size pickup rear seat this has really good room Okay, really nice. Okay, favorite thing. Uh, lots of things I like about this truck, but you know, I always try to pick out one thing that's unique or different. Couple of things actually, but it all involves a tail light. You see that it does have the uh, blind spot radar 
little etching in the side and you can see where the chrome behind it says Ranger but I actually like the LED tail lights on it and I like that LED blinker it, it's really nice it stands out in both the daytime and the nighttime obviously but I like that it's a cool feature um, it's just it's my favorite thing of the vehicle my favorite part was this entire truck I think this is one of the nicest mid-sized trucks out there hey folks I'm Cheerios and I'm Madonna. <laughs> hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And this is Two Guys in a Ride. I was saying this for the truck. <laughs> we... Okay, you're on your own getting out of here. <laughs> what? That was in four-wheel drive economy sport mode. I gotcha. What is economy sport mode? It's my invention. <laughs> so going around this roundabout on these leather seats, I'm slipping and sliding a little bit. You so. just have to have a little more weight like me. <laughs> I didn't slip at all. Now, I had that seat comfortable for me, so how are you back there? You know, I don't care. <laughs>